Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney. If you're new here, I usually do makeup tutorials, but today I wanted to, I get a lot of questions about my uh, accessories and where I get my jewelry from. So I wanted to make a video about some places that I like to shop and other places that I like to get vintage and how I get my accessories. Let's get started. Okay, <laughs> so I just picked out like some of my favorite pieces. I do have a lot of jewelry. First up is Lamanso. I love Lamanso jewelry. They just do all of these really cool pieces. This isn't one, but this one, this one, that one. They're just like really cool, like cocktail jewelry pieces. I'll wear them like stacked. I just love a good statement piece. And Lamanto just has like, they have a lot of like similar silhouettes, but you can get them in different colors. They're just great. That's Lamanto. I will also list all of the websites that I shop at. They'll be in the description. This is another one of my favorite pieces. This is from Plutonia Blue. They are a woman-owned shop, Lamanto as well as woman-owned. They are a woman-owned business in Brooklyn, New York. And this is, I get so many compliments on this ring. It's, I just love the size of it. I love the moons, the witchiness of it. It's just great. I, it's a, my knuckles are really big, but my fingers are smaller. So I usually will stack it. This is um, just a vintage band from, that I got from like my family. And I usually wear it like that. That way it stays in place a little bit better. I've had this ring for over like 10 years now. This is from Gareth Pugh. I'm not sure if they still make it. I'll link the website that I got it at. It's a little strange when you first get it because you're not used to like wearing something on your hand or I wasn't, but get used to it really quick because it's so cool. I have always loved parts of four. They do these really like beautiful industrial looking pieces, like lots of heavy chains and things like that. So I always wanted a piece and I found one that was somewhat in my price range, but I really wanted to, I really wanted a piece by them. So this is from parts of four. This is another ring I get a lot of compliments on. I bought this in this little shop on the Lower East Side. I just love, I just love big, Big stuff. I have big hands. This is a ring that I usually wear on my thumb because it was my dad's. So I get a lot of stuff from my family too. They have really good taste. So, but I love that it's like a jade ring and it's got a dragon. He gave this to me when I was like 16. He got it when he got out of the Navy. This I got from my grandmother, another vintage piece. I just find things for my family and take them. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is from Axel, he was an artist. It's it's called like dragon skin or something like that, but I think the story behind it was that he like rolled the metal over like a skateboard to get the like texture. I, I love that ring and I thought Axel was always really cool. He's passed on, but he's one of my favorite artists. So I'm very grateful that I actually, he sold this to me. It's a good part of being old. So those are the rings and then other pieces that I really, really love. This is from Zana Bain, woman owned again, but it's just a collar, but it's just such a beautiful piece. I tr If I'm gonna buy something that's new, I'll, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna wear it for a really long time or be able to pass it down to somebody so that it's not wasteful. So I will put my money into something that I know that is gonna withstand the test of time. And this is definitely one of them. I was, a huge Anita Pallenberg fan, Anita Pallenberg fan, and in the movie performance, and there's a bunch of like old pictures of her wearing a Whiting and Davis uh, snake necklace. She like wrapped it around a few times. I couldn't find the a necklace from Whiting and Davis that was just like hers and that was long enough, so I just got the belt. Bought this on eBay, and I just wear it around my neck. And I just clasp it. This was my grandmother's. It's just like a long beaded necklace. I'm not sure exactly like when she she got it herself, but it's definitely like probably like 70s, 70s, early 80s. But what I like to do, you can wear it long or I like to wrap it around a few times. It wraps around like three times really perfectly and then just clasp it. But I love like making that into a choker. 
went to this really cool like punk rock flea market is what it was called and I'm from Albany or I live in Albany New York and I am so mad at myself that I lost the card of the artist that made these but she was like right next to us and these are actual church nails that her friend was, was taking down to church and found these and was like well found them got them from the walls I'm not sure and asked her if she would want them and she said absolutely and so that's what those are this i got from a tattoo artist mika sicklinger she's uh, one of my favorite artists and she was selling some of her jewelry so i purchased this from her and it just goes around your neck but it looks so super cool and she's so super cool so i feel like i have a piece of her my cousin made this back in the 90s 80s 90s Probably 90s. It's supposed to be a belt, but I do the same thing that I did with the Whiting and Davis belt. And I just put it around my neck and then let it hang. Or I'll throw it around like a few times and make it into a choker. I also love like little consignment shops or little vintage shops. And this is from Alyssa's store on Lark Street. If you're ever in the Albany area, her store is absolutely amazing. Women owned business. And she just has the coolest stuff. Then these I got from a Saratoga tattoo convention. Again, I lost the card and I'm so mad at myself. I have to get, I want to get better at, so that I can tell people where I got them and other people can support these artists because they're fantastic. But they're just handmade hoop earrings. This is an Eternity Collar from Eternity Collars. My partner and I wear these. They don't come off unless you have like a tool to remove it. This I got from a, a little crystal store, again, right at, um, like up in Albany, New York. Uh, I love crystals and uh, I love big pieces. So this was just perfect. I think it's selenite. And this was an earring. I lost the other one. This was like, my dad got me these like jade earrings uh, when I was a kid. And I lost the other one, of course, cause he gave them to me as a kid. And so I just made it into a pendant and put it on a chain. This is also an eternity cuff. Again, you can't take it off unless you have that little tool. And this I got, I've had this since I was probably like 15, 16 years old. Got it on Long Island. Oh, one more thing. These are, and they're my favorites. These are vintage Glen Yank. I purchased this from another one of my all time favorite artists, Genesis Briar Peorage. Uh, I believe they were Lady J's. Uh, they were having an avant-garde yard sale in Brooklyn and I was able to purchase these pieces. And if you wear them together, you can make a lot of noise. <laughs> and they're pretty small, so you have to be able to collapse your hand. But you can also wear them individual. And these are vintage, I'm pretty sure from the 80s. Hmm. So that is it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I will list all of the shops where you can purchase um, some of these pieces and also some of the links to places that I like to buy vintage pieces as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.